My mother would lay out our clothes for church and make sure we polished our shoes. On Sunday morning, we got up early to have breakfast. Then it was off 
to Sunday school. What's it like at your house now on a Sunday morning? Some people check the weather first. If it's cold or rainy or too hot or too windy, they opt out of church. Or if their money is tight and the car's gas gauge is low, they opt out. If they forgot to pick up their favorite suit from the dry cleaner or they can't seem to motivate themselves to slip from under those warm covers, they opt out. But that's some people. Since the COVID pandemic, that list of some people has grown considerably. Churches all over the country are struggling to maintain viability in the midst of a major bailout of their members. Uh, for many churches, uh, Facebook and YouTube uh, is the new and necessary sanctuary uh, to keep in touch uh, with their apostate defectors. Uh, am I being too harsh? Uh, the Lord is our judge. I know I'm preaching to the choir today because you are here. You are here where you belong. Worshiping the Lord, as our psalmist says, for his wonderful works to the children of men. You have come today because uh, your sincere heart uh, would let you stay uh, at home. Uh, and God welcomes your dedicated commitment uh, to serve Him. Uh, he is pleased with your expressions of appreciation for his goodness and his mercy toward us. So I'm asking you to take this message home with you, planted in your heart, and share it with those who are missing in your pew. You are, after all, God's ambassadors. Yeah, it struck me how easy it is to break the habit of worship. Have you noticed that when you skip one Sunday, uh, it follows with an urge uh, to skip another and another. Uh, just like it takes effort uh, to stick with a diet uh, or an exercise program, uh, it takes effort uh, to remain faithful uh, to worship. Uh, you have to encourage yourself. So here's three things God expects us to do to encourage ourselves. You ought to write this down and put it on your refrigerator or in your bathroom so you can recognize three things. Uh, that God expects us to do uh, to encourage uh, ourselves. Uh, first, uh, we have uh, to congregate. Uh, turn around and look at your neighbor and say, we have to congregate. Uh, come on and put your hands together. Stay with me. I'm on the short train today. The very word congregation means a gathering of people. 
but God wants us to gather together as often as possible. Why? To worship Him. We were created for that very purpose. It's not an option. It's a mandate. A mandate from the Lord. It's the way we provoke love and good works within our Christian community. We must come together to assemble ourselves in the same place at the same time. It's the only way God's plan for our lives works to the fullest. And while we were created to worship the Lord, to acknowledge his goodness and his mercy toward us. There are ancillary or additional benefits to assembling together. When we come together, we draw strength from each other. We lift each other up. I might be having a bad day, but your lifted spirits will go a long way to bringing me back to the higher plane of my Christian existence. Yeah, yeah, I need you, and you need me. That's how it works. Sure, I might be able to see you and hear you on Facebook or YouTube, but I can't feel your spirit because the spirit jumps from person to person, not post to post. In this 21st century, there is just not enough congregating going on. There's not enough elbows linking together. Not enough voices singing together. Not enough knees bowing together. Not enough saints praising together. Secondly, we have to uh, assimilate. Uh, turn around and look at your neighbor and say, we have to uh, assimilate. That means we must become uh, an active part uh, of the whole uh, and embrace the work uh, of spirit growth. Uh, tell your neighbor, this isn't going to be easy. Yeah, yeah, it's not going uh, to be easy. We have to uh, integrate, uh, to get involved, uh, to embrace the work uh, of uh, the church. Uh, and that can only happen uh, when we come together uh, under one roof uh, to digest the preaching uh, and absorb uh, the teaching. Uh, when we uh, assimilate, uh, we adapt to the common goals uh, of the congregation. Uh, we share our gifts uh, and talents uh, to complete the body uh, of Christ. Uh, those uh, who are missing today uh, are handicapping us. Uh, when you miss church, uh, you uh, are handicapping us. Uh, us, yeah, they have stripped us of their gifts and talents, but they have also hindered our connectivity. In God's house, we ought to be collaborating and coordinating and corroborating. Preach, Pastor Moore, I believe I will, so that we can share a like 
mindset uh, when it comes uh, to the message uh, of the gospel. Uh, our church culture uh, is nurtured by uh, our common expression uh, of faith uh, in Jesus Christ. Uh, anyone uh, who hangs around here long enough uh, can't help uh, but feel the love uh, of the risen Savior. It gets on you. Uh, and it gets in you. Uh, it penetrates uh, and saturates. Uh, it restores uh, and revives. Uh, it encourages uh, and inspires. Uh, it's when our spirits connect that we discover the depths uh, of Christ's love. Uh, that's when we realize uh, that he is uh, healing uh, for every wound, uh, comfort uh, for every sorrow, uh, assurance uh, for every despair, uh, provision uh, for every lack, uh, and the solution uh, to every problem. But finally, we are called uh, to articulate. Uh, turn around and look at your neighbor in the eyeball. Smile at him if you're not too mean. Say, we are called to articulate. Uh, come on and put your blessed hands together. We are called to circulate uh, and recount the word of God among the people. We are supposed to publicize uh, the goodness of uh, the Lord, uh, not just uh, among ourselves, uh, but in our communities uh, and with the rest uh, of our family. Uh, there's not enough proselytizing uh, or witnessing uh, going on. Now, when you've got a good thing, uh, you should uh, want uh, to share it. Uh, if you've linked yourself um, with the supernatural power uh, of an awesome uh, God, uh, you should want uh, to broadcast it. Uh, there's a popular theme uh, in the realm of safety uh, that says, uh, if you see uh, something, say uh, something. Uh, I'd like to coin that phrase uh, just for a moment uh, in the world of uh, witnessing. Uh, if you've seen uh, the goodness of God uh, in the land uh, of the living, uh, say uh, something. Uh, if you've been uh, to the water uh, and you've been uh, baptized, uh, say uh, something. Uh, if you've been blessed uh, by the best uh, with peace uh, and uh, prosperity, uh, say uh, something. Uh, if you've been knocked down, uh, but God uh, lifted you up, uh, say uh, something. Uh, if he's been your burden bearer uh, and your battle axe, uh, say uh, something. Uh, if he's been uh, your company keeper, uh, Waymaker, you are. Well, now, when was uh, the last time uh, you broadcast your faith uh, to the unfaithful uh, and spread abroad uh, your trust in the Lord uh, as your mighty master? Uh, if you were doing your job uh, as a witness uh, for the Lord, uh, it should be rumored around town uh, that you are about uh, your father's uh, business. Uh, there's not enough declaring uh, and articulating uh, going on. Uh, you don't have to go uh, overseas. Uh, to spread uh, the gospel uh, in Vermont, uh, a state uh, with only 650,000 
thousand residents, uh, forty-five thousand uh, are not affiliated uh, with any religion, uh, and eight percent of that group uh, are declared uh, atheists. Uh, New York, uh, New Hampshire, uh, Connecticut, uh, Oregon, uh, and Alaska are not far behind. Uh, in fact, uh, in every state uh, in the U.S., uh, there are atheists, uh, and there are an even bigger number uh, who claim uh, to be a Christian, uh, but have uh, no church home uh, or connection uh, with organized faith. Social media is not a church. We've got work to do. COVID may have chased many away, but the word can bring them back. We've got to remind them that Christ is still the light that dispels darkness. We've got to remind them that Christ is still heaven's fountain who seeks the thirsty. This is a message for the missing, but they won't hear it without you. Call up those members who are missing in action and remind them that there is Nobody like Jesus. Tell them to stop treating Jesus like a Facebook post or an app or a passing tweet. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he is waiting to put them back to work. We are the clay and he is the potter. We are the army and he is our captain. We are the servants and he is our master. Reminding the missing in action that nothing in the world can compete with Christ. His glory is greater. His power is stronger. His name is sweeter. His promises are surer. His friendship is dearer. His foundation is firmer. His mercy is fuller. His word is richer. His burdens are lighter. His saints are happier. And his coming is near. That's the message for the missing in action. Tell them to come on back before it's too late. There's work to do. And Jesus is the fountain of the joy. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. Won't you come on back? He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. You've been out of the church too long. You've made too many excuses. It's time for you to come back. It's time for you to do right. It's time for you to get with God's people again. I appreciate social media. I appreciate television. But they can't call you and check on you. They can't be there to help dry your tears and hold your head. And that's why he's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. See, he is waiting, waiting for you and, and me. What's he saying, Pastor? Come home. 
Come home, ye who are willing. Come home, softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling, calling. Come home, come home, ye who are willing, come, come home, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh sinner, come home. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. You've been out of the church a little too long. You've been sitting watching. Facebook traveling from everywhere from your house where well, you need to be in the fellowship with the saints. I know that there are some preachers that say this is the new normal, but I don't accept that. I refuse to accept that. Yes, this is a ministry to those who are sick, to those in hospitals, those in nursing homes, those who are unable to get out. But if you got legs to stand on and feet to walk with and you're able to get out, Get on the bus, get in your car, catch a ride. You need to be in the fellowship with the saints. Won't you make a decision today? Stop dating the church. Stop dating God on Sundays only. He wants you in a committed marital relationship where he is the only one till death do you part. And because of Jesus, death doesn't have to be the end. We are here for you to help you find a good Christian church wherever you are. If you're willing to give your life to the things that count for God, it's time to let go of the things of the world Smoking and drinking, sexing, and all the other things that will not be in heaven. It's time to let those things go, and it's time to get your tickets. And make sure that heaven belongs to you. If you live right, heaven belongs to you. If you pray right, heaven belongs. If you sing right, heaven belongs to you. Oh. Heaven belongs to you. Give us a call at area code 408-532-ROCK. If no one is available to answer, leave your name and number. We'll call you back. We'll pray together. And we'll help you get on the street called Street. The decision is yours. You don't have to be missing in action anymore. But you can come and get to work in the army of the Lord. Well, it's offering time here at Church on the Rock, and we've made it so easy for you to be able to pay your tithes and offerings and free will offerings through the various financial apps on your iOS and Google Play platform. Our preferred app is Zelle Pay. It is free, it is easy, no information is kept, it goes directly into the account. But we also use Cash App and PayPal. All you have to do when they ask you for information is enter our telephone number, area code 408-532-7625. That's 408-532-ROCK. We're also on the Giblify app. 
Search for Church on the Rock Baptist in San Jose. You'll see a picture of the sanctuary in the foreground. Follow the instructions and give that way. You may also visit our website, churchontherockbaptist.com. Hit the giving button and you may follow the instructions and give that way. Finally, you can mail your gift through the good old U.S. Postal Service to Church on the Rock. Post Office Box 730-341, San Jose, California, 95173. Whatever you decide to do for God through the ministry of Church on the Rock, we believe that as you plant the seed, you will receive a harvest and you'll know that only God could do it. Well, until next time, same place, same time. Join us again for Breakthrough with Church on the Rock. Don't you give up. Don't you give in. But stay on the battlefield for the Lord. We are praying for you. And don't forget to pray for us. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord.